Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to drastically improve your tea experience. I'm going to show you how to perform a very basic Gong Fu Cha. First, today I'm going to brew one of our teas, one of the teas we produce in our factory in Jingmai Mountain, Yunnan province. This is the Jingmai Miyun from spring 2021. You can find it on our website. To fit this tea, I've chosen some very simple teaware. You can see a white porcelain gaiwan, a glass pitcher, and my favorite, a glass cup. This glass cup is very simple and yet it is the best tool you can get if you want to analyze and get most out of the fragrance of the tea. Today I use a gaiwan, but of course you could as well use a teapot. But I find that the gaiwan is um, very elegant because it's a very simple tool actually. And today is a very basic Gong Fu demonstration. We don't necessarily need very expensive uh, pieces of tea were not very expensive tea to have an enjoyable tea session. So let's start. We've brought our water to a boil. It's better to let your water rest for about 10-20 seconds so that the water comes to a still and it won't spill out everywhere as the, the steam and the boiling water interact. In case you make a mess, it's very good to have a small tea towel by your side because I can guarantee that you will make a mess at some point in the tea session. And never forget something to discard the water because we're first going to preheat the gaiwan and the teaware. So let's preheat it. So when I pour water, I like to do circles on the sides of the gaiwan. We pour hot water in our gaiwan and we're going to wait for about 20 seconds just for it for the heat to transfer. Then we're going to move it to our pitcher. And now our gawan is preheated. Of course, we could preheat it more than this, but I think that will be enough. Have a good look at the tea leaves because usually those leaves are beautiful. And I'm going to let it slide into the guy one. Today I went for a light session by my standard. I got uh, six gram of tea. I usually have a little bit more, but it's quite late in the night. So I'm going to stick to six grams. And if you're a beginner, I recommend that you start light, especially with poor tea, because these teas can be a bit uh, strong for the stomach if you're not used to it. So now I've kept this and this is where my, uh, my tea trash comes into play. So don't forget to have it. And now wait for it. Our guy one is quite hot. We've put the dry leaves in. Let's give it a little shake. And open and smell. Mm, that's one of the best smells you can get. And now we're going to start pouring our tea. So we're going to give it a rinse first. So again, um, not pouring directly over the leaves. I do circles on the sides, but usually to finish, I like to finish in the center. Now, of course, there are no strict rules about this and you'll surely get your own technique. I'm going to reboil my water. So we're going to give a 30 second rinse. Actually, I never count the time. The best is to look at the leaves. My water is getting a bit noisy here. So the length of time for the rinse really depends on what kind of tea you have. For example, if you have a tightly compressed uh, poor tea cake, you're going to want to give it a longer rinse so that the, the leaves can detach. If you have a uh, oolong tea, which is rolled in balls, then again, it's going to take some time for those balls to open up. In those cases, you might want to give a longer rinse, but that will be enough for Jingmai Miyun today. Make sure you extract all the water from the gaiwan. And usually I like to let the gaiwan lid open so that I can enjoy the leaves while drinking the tea. Now it's another good time to smell the leaves again after the rinse. And you can see now that those leaves are not fully open. They are half open. And it's during that time between the, while they are opening up actually, that's when you'll get most of the, the fragrance, the mouthfeel 
the interesting things in tea. My water is still hot, so I'm going to brew again. And this will be our first brew. And the first brew usually will be almost as long as the rinse. And you will see that as we go through the steepings, uh, we can shorten the time drastically. And then in the end, towards the end of the session, we're going to increase the time again. This should be about it. So I mainly judge by, by looking at the leaves and of course through experience. But if you don't have the experience and don't feel confident in just judging by the leaves, I would say give a 30 second rinse. The first brew will be 15 seconds, then the next brew 10 seconds, then the next one five seconds. And then you do five seconds until you, you feel the tea is too weak and then you start adding again maybe five or ten seconds every time. But really you don't have to worry too much about the brewing time. Um, it also depends on uh, how you like the tea. Do you like it strong or uh, softer and mild? Usually when you give a short brew you'll get uh, better fragrance and when you give a strong brew you will get a better mouthfeel. If it's a poor tea especially most of the interesting things are happening in the mouth and the fragrance will come after you, you've had the tea actually. So just have a few sips of that tea. And take your time. Usually it's meant to be a break in your, in your daily activities. So if you can afford it really, take your time for uh, a very nice and focused Kung Fu session. The first brew is not the, the strongest one. You can say it's, it's also to rinse, the, to rinse your mouth, okay? It's to prepare you for the session because maybe before you brushed your teeth or maybe before you had, um, uh, you had a lot of cheese or stinky, to, stinky tofu and now you want to clear your mouth. Once you finish this first brew, I recommend that you smell the bottom of this pitcher. Mm. You get some nice honey fragrance in this tea because the bottom of the pitcher usually is where you'll guess, get the most out of the, the fragrance that you can get from the nose. But after you've drunk the tea, you will feel the fragrance through retro olfaction. You know, like closing your mouth and breathing out through the nodes, like, like this. And you have the fragrance from your throat that comes back through the nose and that's how you will feel the, the most, the most uh, complex fragrance in the tea. So as I said, my second brew will be a bit shorter. Now I can see that the leaves are opening up nicely. So you can close the, the lid of course, but you can also keep it open and enjoy the, the sight of these beautiful leaves. And that will be enough. So I must say today I'm brewing quite light. I'm used to brewing a bit stronger than this. But I know that uh, most people like it that way. You can also have a look at the liquor. You can learn a lot of things from uh, the liquor and uh, the look of the leaves. This will surely be a topic for other videos. So on the second brew, usually you will start getting mm, the punch of the tea. You will start being able to tell more about the mouthfeel. Uh, I wouldn't judge a tea on the first brew mm, because uh, some teas can take some time to open up. I wouldn't give uh, a judgment on, uh, on a decent tea before the, the third or fourth brew. Of course, if the tea uh, is moldy or if it just tastes terrible, I will just say it tastes terrible uh, at the first brew. And with experience, you can get some tea that you know aren't really worth uh, going on with. But we're in a decent house here and we have decent tea. So let's keep brewing. Oh, and I'm going to refill my kettle.
And you know that water is the mother of tea, so you have to pay attention to water. And so I just bought this nice tool that helps me pour the water in and at the same time I can just have a look at the water and be reminded that this is what most of the tea is made of. Now our water has boiled, it is now still and we can pour again. Usually when you'll pour the tea from the gaiwan to the pitcher, you will push all the leaves on one side. So you have to kind of compensate for that and kind of kick the leaves back in the center with the flow of water. And as we can see, the leaves are opening up progressively. We can also take a look at the liquor. Usually the liquor color for a given tea can be a good indicator of the, the intensity, the strength of the brew. So you can also use color to balance your brews. The Gong Fu method really is the best way to brew tea if you're all about taste because through multiple infusions, you'll be able to see the change in taste across the infusions. And usually that's the mark of a good tea. A Gong Fu session is a bit like watching a movie. Okay, you have an introduction to the tea through the rinse. You can have a look at the leaves. Then you get that first brew, which you use to rinse your mouth and get acquainted with the, the personality of the tea. And then, just like a good story, there's a development in the character of the tea. Often different endings depending on the personality of the tea. Some teas can drop flat suddenly and you want to just discard them. Or some teas can go for a long, long time giving out sweetness uh, forever, basically. So I would say with a basic pour tea, you can get about five, six brews out of your uh, um, Kung Fu session. Of course, it will depend on how strong you like the tea. So if you like strong tea, well, I like strong tea, so I say like five strong brews, that would be by my standard. But actually, if you like softer tea, you can go up to 10. With higher quality tea made from ancient tea garden leaves, from, for example, or from certain terroir, which are renowned for their endurance, you can get up to 20 brews actually. More expensive tea can be more economical than cheap tea because you can get a lot of brews out of them. Well, at least that's what the tea enthusiasts say to justify the tea spending. Green tea would be the only kind of tea that I wouldn't recommend brewing Gong Fu style because green tea requires um, colder water and so I would recommend brewing it in a glass actually. Or you can brew the green tea directly in the pitcher. Gong Fu style is most suitable for all the other kinds of teas, poor tea, oolong tea, black tea, and white tea. Fourth brew. Alternatively to smelling the bottom of the pitcher, you can also smell the gaiwan lid. I think this caters more to the Wulong tea drinkers uh, because Wulong tea generally has a much more powerful, much more uh, demonstrative fragrance than poor tea. So you will get a lot of fragrance, get a nice Dan Song, a nice Mi Lan Xiang, or um, a high mountain tea from Taiwan, or maybe a rock tea, and you will surely get a lot of fragrance on this lid. You can have a look at the liquor color and I can see that it's uh, slightly lighter than the, than the former brew. So maybe it's a hint that I'm gonna have to adjust the time and start brewing a bit longer. We're now at the fourth brew and maybe the tea has already reached kind of a peak and now we, s we need to start adding time. We've paid attention to the fragrance by smelling the pitcher or the gaiwan lid, but what really matters, especially when brewing poor tea, is the mouthfeel. If you're a whiskey or wine drinker, you will know what I'm talking about. Pay attention really to what happens in your mouth when the tea uh, goes through, especially when it goes through the throat. 
Um, does it feel oily? Does it feel more like gasoline, some very ethereal, very light? Or does it feel thick and viscous? Mm, that's what's really mm, enjoyable about poor tea. There's a lot of uh, dynamics happening in the mouth. So for that fifth brew, I'm going to mm, adjust the time and brew a bit longer. So you can see the, the extra time I gave to the brew allowed to compensate for the leaves weakening. And now I get a slightly stronger taste. So usually I try to keep the taste consistent, but it's up to you. You can also use um, the same time at every brew and just enjoy the tea going strong and then uh, go, getting softer, uh, usually more sweetness, less bitterness. Don't focus too much on the brewing times. What matters really is the taste that you get in the cup. And you can usually, with a bit of experience, by looking at the leaves, you can guess how much time you will need to brew the tea. And so now I will put an end to this tea session. For the last brew, usually I, I like to give it a very long brew so that uh, I can enjoy what remains of power in those leaves. So I'm gonna give it a long brew. Let's be patient and sit for a while. And you can see now that the liquor has darker color for that last brew because I gave it about a three minute brew and I will be able to enjoy the last brew of that tea. A tea which probably had more to deliver than six brew but this was just to show you how to brew the tea gong fu style. And now that I am done with my tea, the cleanup will be very simple. Before discarding the leaves, you can also play with them, you know, lay them here on the tea table and just uh, enjoy their look. Again, there are many things you could uh, tell from the, the look of the leaves, but that will be for another video. And once you're done, you just discard them in my tea trash. Of course, you can see I made a mess so I can clean up with my little tea towel. Just give a rinse to the guy one. Porcelain is very easy to clean. Usually I, I never use soap actually, I just clean it with hot water. And we're done ready to carry on with the next session. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give a like to the video, subscribe to our channel, and hopefully see you again. Bye bye.